let's talk about Anaconda. So Anaconda is a data science platform that comes pre-bundled with all the tools and libraries that you need to get started with data science right away. In this video, I'm going to show you how to download and install Anaconda, as well as how to get started with its navigator and really begin writing Python code uh, in Jupyter Notebooks. Okay, so if you're looking to get started with Anaconda, uh, you want to go out to anaconda.com uh, and take a look at the web page there. Um, so they have a number of different editions of uh, Anaconda out there, and you can take a look at their, their pricing page, actually, so for, for a detailed comparison about each different uh, edition. Um, I would also take a look at the terms and conditions as well to determine if you can use the free version of this. Uh, but for most people who are just playing around with this learning Python, learning data science in an individual setting, uh, you're going to be okay with Anaconda Individual Edition. Uh, that's going to work on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. Uh, now you go there uh, to that product page and it's going to show you the recommended download for, for yourself. Uh, you can also click ad get additional installers to find uh, what you're looking for. But uh, just download and install that. Choose the recommended options that it pushes your way uh, and you're going to be in a good, a good uh, spot. So once that's finished downloading, uh, you can find uh, your Anaconda Navigator by going out to either the Start menu on Windows or the Finder on Mac OS. Uh, I'm running Windows 11 here, and I'm just going to type in Anaconda uh, Navigator. And once it catches up with me, it's going to recommend it, and I will uh, choose to open that. An Anaconda Navigator, uh, and it does pop a bunch of windows <laughs> up, uh, up, it really is uh, working just fine. But Anaconda Navigator is basically the, uh, the launch screen or the launch platform for uh, the Anaconda platform. And that Navigator is going to let me get started with anything really related to data science. Uh, so I can take a look at the home page and it shows me all these tools I can use. Let me maximize this, get a little bit more screen space here. Uh, you can see I've got some tools that help me work with uh, with data science, uh, including RStudio, VS Code, things like that. Uh, I also have a couple instances of uh, Jupyter Notebooks as well as Jupyter Labs. Um, I can take a look at the environments uh, that I have installed. These are really just uh, sets of packages and the like, um, so I can have different uh, profiles of a data science environment on my machine if I wanted to. Um, I can have uh, I can take a look at some learning resources, which are videos and tutorials and webinars and things like that. Uh, I can take a look at the community. Um, there's links to documentation as well. Uh, but for most uh, most of you guys who are getting into this, I just go to the home page and then choose either Jupyter Notebook or Jupyter Labs. Uh, Jupyter Notebook's more traditional at this point, so I'm going to go with that, but both of them let you do about the same thing. Uh, Jupyter Notebooks is a way of working with Python code in a notebook type of environment um, where you can take your notebooks and share them with other people. So in order, in order to work with our notebook, we're going to have to create one. So I'm going to go over here to the upper right corner uh, in this tree view, and I'm going to say new. And I'm going to say, hey, I want a new notebook. Use the Python 3 kernel. It actually comes bundled with Python. Uh, when you install Anaconda, so you don't even have to worry about configuring that. Uh, and you'll get a new notebook that looks like this. And you can just type in some Python code. So I could type in uh, num equals 42, print uh, your number is, and then, you know, this is just Python code here, str num. And I can hit control enter or click run and it's going to run that cell. Um, so that's kind of cool. And if I tweak this a little bit, uh, I can change my number to something different, such as 77, and hit run again, and it runs it just fine. And I can see this little number, this little blue count here, is the uh, count of which uh, the last cell was run. Uh, so here's a cool thing. If I wanted to get access to that number, uh, I still have it in memory. That variable's been declared in memory. Uh, so I could say the number is still plus str num. Um, and it's it's going to say the number is still 77. The other really cool thing to point out with Jupyter Notebooks is that the last statement that you have in a cell in a Jupyter Notebook, each one of these things is a cell, um, is going to automatically be print out anyway. So you can kind of take advantage of that. And here I'm just going to put num, and it's going to give me the current value of number. Um, and 
this is a very silly example here, but you'll use Jupyter Notebooks to sort of progressively manipulate data, to run visualizations and charts, to work with libraries like Pandas, uh, to arrange tables of data, and uh, uh, you can really kind of get this, this flow of data down. Um, if you wanted to, you can also add some annotations, so I can change this, this cell here from a uh, code cell to a markdown cell, and I can add in some mark some actual markdown syntax for a header. And as soon as I leave the cell, uh, it's actually going to convert that to a normal markdown style he set header. So I can I can kind of combine uh, markdown and code to create some interactive documentation I can share with my coworkers, and they can go in there and work with it too. Um, one thing to note is that if I ever change that num to 42 or something else here, I run that cell, I can go back up here and I can run uh, this cell or this cell um, just by uh, just by clicking on it and clicking run, uh, and it's going to give me the current value of it. So I can sort of run these cells out of order. Uh, most of the time you're going to want to try to run top to bottom, but you're using a shared set of variables that you can reuse between cells and so you can kind of rerun parts of the experiment that interest you. So that's Jupyter Notebooks in a nutshell. Uh, that's Anaconda in a nutshell as well. There's a lot of really interesting things you can do, but this will help you get started in getting a Python environment up on your machine that you can work with. Uh, if you want to make sure your, your notebook is saved, make sure you do file and then uh, you save you can save your notebook as something. So save and checkpoint here. And I can rename my notebook here from uh, Untitled to Anaconda Jupyter Tutorial, or whatever I wanted to name it. Uh, and then if I wanted to come back to it at some point in time, uh, I might go close, choose to close and halt, and that'll take me out here, over here. And if I ever wanted to get back into it, I can just click on this Anaconda Jupyter Tutorial. So that's Anaconda and Jupiter uh, in six minutes. So I hope that was very helpful for you. Uh, let me know what you'd like me to get into next and uh, what questions you have about data science. But uh, happy coding and enjoy.